Over the years, people have asked me how I record my drums. I used to record them live. I don't anymore. So what do I use now? Steven Slate drums, or SSD. You can use whatever you want. This is what works for me. I do believe for the average musician recording in a home studio, a good sample program like this represents the best option, unless you're a drummer and really passionate about doing them live. For a pretty in-depth look at how drum sample programs work, soundonsound.com has a really good article named Programming Realistic Drum Parts. Even though it's from 2010, it's still very relevant today. The bottom line is, when used correctly, when you're done with your drum track, only the most trained ears can pick out that they're samples. What I learned after years of trial and error is that the best way to get the MIDI notes into the computer is to capture as much of a real performance as possible. When I first started, I clicked each note into the timeline with my mouse. Sure, the sample sounded good and everything was on beat, but the result sounded stiff and non-human. I finally realized I could play the drums using my keyboard MIDI controller. This way, the natural dynamics of my fingers hitting the keys at varying strengths would trigger MIDI notes of differing velocities. The result is a convincingly natural sounding drum track. So my process for recording drums is once I've got some guitar down, what I like to do, because I can't play everything at once, I like to do multiple passes. So usually I'll do bass drum and snare and some very simple fills. And I'll do that as one pass. And then I'll fix that up and then do the cymbals. So I'm going to record and then I'll show you what I do. So as you can hear, if I just play this, It's rather offbeat. So what I do is I quantize the MIDI. I kind of like to open this up to see how far off these are. So you can see they're all off a little bit. So I'll quantize. I'm going to just have my resolution set to 1 16th and just see what that looks like. So as you can see here, they're all much better and since I'm doing small sections of the song at a time I will play each section that I just recorded and quantized to make sure it didn't move a note forward or backwards too much. So something obviously right there was weird. So I think this should have been held here. So something in here was odd. I think I may have missed a note. Yeah. So here I can just add another note. And here the velocity on this one is really far down, so I can bring that up so it's not so so it doesn't stick out so much as being really quiet. So now that I've got bass drum and snare and a very simple fill or two, then I go back and I do the same thing um, with hi hat, ride, crash, ride bell, crash crash, and hi-hat. All right, let's see how this feels.
to look at those. So again, these notes are all, they're kind of all over the place. So I'm going to quantize these. And let's give that a listen. Not perfect. I wouldn't use this. I'm just using this as an example. But that's my process. That's how I record the drums. One thing you have to keep in mind, it's really, really important when programming drums, is you can't make a three or four armed drummer. It's really easy to do. So if you're doing a fill and you're really playing drums, you know, you're doing this kind of fill, that kind of thing, you're using both of your hands. So you can't have hi-hat going while you're doing that because it's physically impossible if you were actually playing that. 